In the next movie, I'll investigate the following. Modeling place families, choosing categories to assign modeling place families to, an introduction to reference planes, and the extrude and sweep tools. So, creating in-place families won't allow you the flexibility that a loadable family would. The reason being is that in-place families are meant to be context specific and should only be modelled once to suit the context they are intended for. Think of in-place families as bespoke geometry created on a project-by-project -project basis. In-place families, unlike loadable families, will not change if you were to edit the geometry of a single instance. This itself can cost valuable time. Always think to yourself, will I need to use this geometry again in the project? If the answer is yes, then you will need to create a loadable family. If the answer is no, then an in-place family may be the answer for you. So now we're going to focus on creating a bespoke piece of furniture to fit around the column within the project. To reiterate what we have just touched upon, if the piece of furniture were to be used elsewhere in the project, or indeed in another project, I would create the furniture using a loadable family. As this is going to be a one-off, then the in-place family will do just fine. So here we are in the project environment, and in front of us we can see a basic room with a column within the room space. The views are separated, and in each of the views we can see predefined reference planes. The brief received is to create a bespoke piece of furniture surrounding the column to make a table. The in-place family component is ideal for this scenario. The bespoke piece of furniture is to be formed from wood to reflect the section of a tree. To create this part of the bespoke table, the extrude tool will be used. The table edges will need to be protected by a sheet of aluminium, so to facilitate this, the table edge will be created using the sweep tool. So without further ado, let's begin. Firstly, I'd like to draw your attention to reference planes. This is only an introduction to reference planes, as reference planes are covered in depth in movies later to come. Reference planes are datum points in the project. They are indicated in the project environment by a green dashed line and are crucial to building successful families. Here we can see reference planes in plan. If I select one of the reference planes, they will be visible in other views, including parallel plan views, sections and elevations. If you can't see a reference plane in a view, then the reference plane is either parallel to the view you're looking at or not passing through the view plane. To demonstrate this, we can see a reference plane that is parallel to the section line in the view. Notice how this does not show in the section. Now let's take a look in the section view. Notice that we can only see three reference planes in this view. However, there are four reference planes perpendicular to this view in plan. So what's happening? Well, the reference plane that we can't see is not intersecting the view plane and therefore we cannot see it. Let's force the intersection to see if it resolves the issue. As you can see, the reference planes must intersect the view plane to be visible. In this case, the view plane resides on the section line. Think of reference planes as infinite datums that can act as hosts for your geometry. In this project, we can see that the table fits between two reference planes. If I flex the reference planes by editing the temporary dimension to let's say 150, we can see the geometry updates without having to go back into the extrusion itself. I want to add at this point that reference planes have direction, so be careful when manipulating reference planes in both plan and section views. This will be expanded upon later. So now let's look at creating an extrusion. So what is an extrusion? An extrusion is a 3D solid generated by a 2D profile. A solid or void extrusion is the easiest form to create. You sketch a 2D profile on a work plane or reference plane and then extrude that profile perpendicular to the plane. Before you extrude the shape, you can specify its start and end points to increase or decrease the depth of the form. By default, the extrusion start point is zero. The work plane does not need to be either the start or the end point of the extrusion. You only use it to sketch on and to set the extrusion direction. Now let's create our first extrusion. Let's navigate to the plan view. Now let's create a model in place component. Let's select the correct category that this model in place family should be assigned to. In this case, we should choose the furniture category as we are creating a table. This will ensure that we can hide the table along with all the other furniture in the project when we turn off the furniture category in the visibility graphics. For AutoCAD users, it's similar to assigning an element to a layer. Now let's give the new component a name. I'm going to call this CABS hyphen wood table. So the first thing you'll notice is that the interface changes to the family editor interface and we now have the ability to create 3D geometry directly within the Revit project. Now let's set the work plane that we want to use to start the extrusion and set the direction of the extrusion. Now let's create the 2D profile by using the pick lines tool. 
Now let's set the depth of the extrusion to 350. Now let's assign a material to the extrusion. Once we've assigned the material to the extrusion, let's finish the in-place model and view it in the project environment. Now let's align the top of the table to the reference line. Now if we flex the reference line by typing in, let's say, 150 into the temperature dimension, the table will flex. And that's our first extrusion created. Now let's create our first sweep. So what is a sweep? Well, if we cast our minds back a few minutes, we discussed extrusions. And an extrusion is a 2D profile that is extruded perpendicular to the work plane that it was created on to inform the 3D geometry. A sweep is very similar in that it requires a 2D profile to inform the 3D geometry. However, the path the profile is extruded along can be used defined or hosted by existing geometry in the project. This is just what we need to create the aluminium edge for our table. So with this in mind, I'm going to use the edge of the table to host the path of the sweep. So if I need to change the shape of the table, the sweep will update accordingly. So now what I'm going to do is edit the existing model in place family. There's no need to create a new component for the table edge itself. So I'm going to select the model in place family. And I'm going to edit in place. So now I'm going to choose sweep and we have the ability either to pick a path or sketch a path. I'm going to use pick path because I need the geometry to inform the 3D path for me. So you can see here it says pick 3D edges. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the edge of the table. So the blue line indicates the extrusion edge. So I'm going to select the blue line and it should turn pink. There we go. And I just need to be careful that I don't miss anything and there's a little straight edge there. So let's just select that as well. Okay. So you can see the 3D edges have been selected and now we're ready to create a profile. So if you've loaded a profile in, you can either select it from that list or you can go ahead and hit edit profile to draw in a custom profile for the table edge. That's what we're going to do now. So, what we can do is we can use this work plane to sketch our profile, but it can be quite awkward. So what we're going to use is the viewer, which should allow us to draw perpendicular to the work plane. So let's go ahead and choose viewer. And you can see it brings up the table edge and you can see we can draw straight on. So I'm going to go ahead and choose rectangle. And now I'm going to sketch out a rectangle relative to the table edge, like so. Now that's done, I can close the viewer. And whilst I'm here, I'll just take a quick look at it. And you can see that it's hosted nicely by the 3D edges that we selected earlier. So let's go ahead and give this a material. And I'm going to choose aluminium and then press OK. So there's our profile done. So I'm going to hit finish. And then you can see the profile has been completed. So if I click the green tick again, there we have a complete sweep around the table. And if I edit the table now, the sweep will update accordingly. So I'm now in a position to finish the model. And there we have our first sweep.